coder. I am not an engineer. I wish I was. It sounds like it's a, I miss my calling and you know. So I, I actually don't have a, either an engineering or coding background, which is very strange that I'm here talking to you because of that. Um, uh, my company, I actually have three. Um, yeah, I have a habit of starting companies. Some of them work, some of them don't. Three have survived. Uh, the one that survived the longest is a company called Aviate Media, and we are system integrators. So we, we put together systems for video, now for VR. Um, we also do like stereoscopic 3D systems. And uh, about five years ago, uh, no, not five, 2009, yeah, six years ago, we formed a company with a group of people whom we had been working for for a while, and this company was called Widescreen Media. And the company was put together with the intention of shooting stereoscopic 3D content. You know, like the kind of movies you wear the glasses with the avatar and you watch, that kind of stereoscopic 3D. Not live action stereoscopic 3D, not animated stereoscopic 3D. So, uh, we were interested in this. We were lucky enough to get a grant from MDA to start up a company. We shot our first stereoscopic 3D movie in Indonesia called Amphibious 3D. It was a very, very B movie. We are not proud of it. Uh, slasher kind of shit. Oh God, it's horrible. Anyway, then, uh, then about two months after we finished the movie, uh, Avatar came out. <laughs> and then everybody wanted to do stereoscopic 3D. You know, but it's not easy because you have to make the leap from 2D to 3D. We had already done it once. We already knew how to do it from an engineering point of view. We knew a lot of other things. So um, we, we went to various festivals. We talked to various people. Then one day we got a call from Hong Kong. And somebody said, uh, our boss want to talk to you about shooting a stereo 3D movie. And you're like, uh, who the fuck are you? You know, so, and then, and then, and then, and they say, he's going to fly it out. Like, okay, yeah, who's your boss? And he say, the boss, oh, my boss is Sui Hark. And if you don't know who Sui Hark is, it's T S U I H A R K, Sui He is, uh, he's a considered Hong Kong's. What is that? Who's the guy who did? Uh, yeah, I, my brain is not working. I'm very tired. I'm really sorry. Uh, see, I can't even think of Jaws. What's his name? Yeah, he's like. Hong Kong Spielberg, he does all the radical stuff. He, he did a movie once a, a long time ago called Once Upon a Time in China. Okay, uh, his recent movies, the one that we shot was, the first one that we shot was a, wow, this is a very interesting story. So, Si Hak came down and talked to us and he said, you know, he flew down to meet us, which was quite an honor. I mean, this guy is huge. And um, so he came down and we did a couple of tests we shot some things in 3D, we went to the cinema, we converted it, we showed it to him. He asked some questions and he said, okay, you know, he's convinced. He said, I've gone all over the place, I've gone to Hong Kong, I've gone to Korea, I've gone to... You know, the only people I talked to who make sense about this, which was a big honor. So he said, we're going to shoot a movie in 3D. He said, he said, then he said, okay, but you, you don't have enough people in China who know how to shoot a movie. He said, that's okay, because we're going to shoot another movie first, and that's going to be our test movie. And I said, what? Yeah. So we're going to shoot this movie to get them prepared for 3D, then we're going to shoot the real movie, and that real movie is going to be the actual 3D movie, but this is the practice movie. And he said, oh. <laughs> because, this is the kicker, the actual movie that we shot in 3D, the first movie was called Catching Monkey, and I heard that they're just about to release it. It was shot in somewhere in 2010. That was a practice movie, and they decided, ah, yeah, we finished. They were only supposed to shoot 45 minutes, then we came one and a half hours. So it became a full movie, and then they decide, oh yeah, we have it in the can, all that, might as well just release the damn thing. So now they're going to release it, I don't know when. But that's the name of the movie, it's called Catching Monkey. Then the second movie that we shot was called Flying Swords of Dragon's Gate, and it starred Jet Li. So we were on set with him and Jet Li in a desert shooting, shooting China's first uh, wushu 3D movie, stereoscopic 3D movie. And then after that, we shot a second one uh, with, with, uh, with him again. And when you say we, it was not me. I didn't end up in China. It was my partner who did it. Okay? So I'm taking a lot of credit for the company, but I'm definitely not taking credit for any of the work done. But we're very proud because uh, Flying Swords won a lot of Golden Horse Awards for stereoscopic 3D. Uh, which you all know is now down. Nobody wants to do it anymore. Except in China, where we're still doing We just finished um, shooting something called The Mermaid with Stephen Chow. 
So we just finished that one, it's going to come out maybe in about a year or so after the post-production and all that is done. So all of this, while we were doing all of this, we were training people in stereoscopic 3D. And then what happened was uh, one of the people that we trained and worked with went back to India uh, where he was originally from and he was doing some work and he ended up doing some training for people who wanted to do their materials in 3D and then he, he got interested in the Oculus Rift. At that time it was a demo unit I never heard of. He brought it down one day to show me and I was like, okay, this is radical, it just blew me away. And we were messing around with it, we had some ideas and things that we wanted to do. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was this. Okay, so what is this? This is like a virtual reality ride. So you have a person, they're sitting on a, on a, uh, on a platform. And what this, this device in front here contains are blowers for hot air and cold air and uh, uh, other things. And the chair has vibrators and uh, things that move. And this was the concept. And, you know, concepts are very interesting. But now, I'm going to show you the reality. Sorry, I'm very old-fashioned. I didn't prepare a slide for this. Okay, I cannot see. Anyway. So, this is the reality. We actually built the damn thing. And then we are charging $25 a ride. All the noises you hear there are like the vibration of the... Whoops! We have lost picture. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Bad idea. Okay, I'm just going to leave the volume on my laptop if you can hear that. So, so what's happening here is we built the chairs. And we built the rides. We have three titles in right now. Um, and that's the, the wind blowers you see going on. So what they're going through is they're going through something like a... Uh, uh, So we built the entire system. There's beeping going on in the background because 20 seconds before the ride ends, we, uh, the system beeps so that person can go and help the person come off. And if you look at them, they're wearing this, uh, this, this thing on their heads, which is, uh, I'm not talking about the headphone and the, the headset and the, the headphones. And, uh, it's like a surgical thing on top. And we had to build the seat belt in because we realized that people sometimes got dizzy and fell off. few other videos of people taking the rides is very amusing but I think we'll stop here. So we set this up in Sentosa. Uh, yeah, it's actually in Sentosa. Uh, and then we were setting up and running for about a week and then we got, we had to stop because there was a legal issue with the people who were renting the place who were sub-renting from another person and then Sentosa got involved and then they apologized a lot because they actually committed to all this and then didn't realize that they were in for some weird kind of and so now they're helping us to find another location and in the meanwhile since we have time on our hands we are taking our rides and we are making them portable so that they can move around so that they can be placed in multiple locations like arcade rides in, uh, in a very small uh, footprint so the, the idea is that uh, for something about the size of this couch that's all you need for one of the seats and uh, it should be able to move around anywhere. It takes up very little power and it doesn't require any other safety or other issues. We learned a lot of lessons in doing this about engineering, about uh, 
making the VR work with all the different components um, about the whole uh, because we, we also there's two, there are two types of virtual reality there's a, the one where you take a video and you shoot 360 and that's uh, 360 but it's not stereo it's, it, it, there is no depth perception and for us that's not really virtual reality because if you don't have depth perception right, you can't feel like you are immersed in that environment and for us immersion is everything you must feel like you're there so we've, we've been doing that we are now currently experimenting with uh, because we already have the cameras we shoot movies in 2D so for us to shoot movies in, uh, if in VR is just the next logical step we are very conversant with stereoscopic 3D, we are, very, we, we are very conversant with making people comfortable in 3D because it's not easy. It is, stereographers I don't have an easy time of it because if you don't do this right, if you don't do stereoscopic vision right, it will give a person a headache. We actually limit all our rights to 4 minutes because we don't want people who are, because there's about 5% of the population that cannot handle stereoscopic 3D. They will get nauseous, they will vomit. It's, it's, it's built into the way that you perceive depth. Sometimes when you are very young, you might have an accident or something might happen or your brain, the way your brain is wired to perceive depth, depth doesn't work very well. So about 5% of the population cannot watch stereoscopic 3D because uh, in the traditional way in the cinemas and even like this because what will happen is they will get nauseous. So the, 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 in order to reduce that 5% to maybe 1% so that we can still, we, 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 we don't nauseate the majority of our audience, uh, even that 5%, right, we reduce our rights to 4 minutes. Because, yeah, like what he did with the lizard thing, with the two eye looking left and right, I'm like horrified. <gasps> because it's like, wow, I cannot imagine the headache, because you're, you're, what you're happening is your brain is trying to decide uh, left eye, right eye, uh, and then trying to make sense of that image, and it will work. Even bad 3D will give you depth, but then what will happen is your brain is processing in a way that's terribly unnatural to it, and after a while, you will, you will get a headache. That's why you get the headache. Bad 3D will give you headache, which is what happened after Avatar, right? All these shows decided they want to do 3D, and then they say, the budget too expensive to shoot in 3D. Never mind, convert. Then the good conversion took two years. Bad conversion took six weeks, you know? And then the bad conversion, they just take, let's just get onto the bandwagon, throw 3D, put it out there, and people got headache, and then 3D, stereoscopic 3D just went after that, because there were so many bad experiences with it. So uh, that's us, and if you have any questions, I'll, yeah, I, I think that that's something we can say. Thank you.